Super excited to bring my good buddy, Mr. Brandon Clay to the stage next. Again, author, Medicare man, incredible at cross-selling, incredible at building a six-figure renewal income, unbelievable speaker. He's one of the best speakers in the insurance industry. He really is. Some think he's the best, you know? I'm trying to get better and level up, so maybe I can get on his level, okay? He's phenomenal, good dude, knows a ton about this industry, has been everywhere in this industry, and is now a part of Heartland Financial Group and One Life America. Good dude, super excited to have him a part of it. My good buddy, come on now, bring him out to the virtual stage, Mr. Brandon Clay. You can't fail if you don't quit. My name is Brandon Clay, strategist, storyteller, and coach. And I've been given the awesome opportunity and privilege by Cody Askins and the 8% Nation to address you guys in these times of challenge, but also in these times of opportunity. Everything's about perception and how you see it. This country, the world, the global community has come through far greater things than this. Not to minimize the times we're in, but this too shall pass and you can't fail if you don't quit. So I wanna take a few moments to give you my perspective on how things are right now and what you can do to actually regroup, re-engineer and redefine your life and come out stronger on the other end. So there's a few things I wanna put on your mind. Number one, don't panic. I know right now these are serious times. Look, I had the flu a little while ago, a few months ago, and now I've been thinking in my mind, did I have COVID-19? But it's amazing as you're being inundated in the news and in other media outlets that this is starting to get inside of our psyche and starting to control our psychology. A few weeks ago, I literally had to say stop, no more. While I don't wanna be inundated, I wanna be informed. I wanna make sure that I govern myself in my mind because that's my greatest weapon. So as we talk about the psychology of getting through and getting to your goals and dreams, I wanna share with you three core concepts and I'll lay them out for you now. And that's to plan, that's to prepare, and that's to execute. In this time where we're all sequestered, we all should be thinking about what we want in life. We should be thinking about the things we want mentally, spiritually, socially, physically, and financially. We should be planning those things out almost like it was the new year, because it will be a new you. First, you've got to be ready and willing to plan. Certainly now, whatever plans you had in effect may not be relevant in this current environment. So you've got to regroup, redefine, and re-engineer those plans. But at the core of your objectives, it should be what you want out of life. What do you want mentally, spiritually, socially, physically, and financially, the Fab Five as I like to call it. Don't redefine your target just because of the circumstances. You may have to redefine how you get there, but don't allow the changes in the environment to make you change your core goals. So it's what you want comes first. Then it's why you want it. And these are usually emotionally based, something that gives you satisfaction, fulfillment, that fulfills your purpose in life. But as you determine your what and your why, if your why is big enough, you'll be able to endure the how. And the how becomes the strategy the tactics, the things you're gonna do in order to reach it. In the industry I'm in, technology adoption has been compressed. What we thought might have taken 12 to 18 months for people to start engaging in is now happening at the speed of light. Why? Because people know what they want, people know why they want it, 
and the how has to evolve based on the circumstances. In my life, I was sharing this with Cody. When I was about his age in my mid early twenties, I tried to do some great things relative to speaking and getting out in front of people. I had booked this really large hall and I had actually sent out invitations. There was no email back then. I was on a radio show and had had lots of listeners and they were all listening in. And I'd spent all the resources we had as a young couple with young kids. And when I showed up that day, the RSVPs had been fairly light and it was even worse when I turned the corner. Ultimately, I had 500 empty seats with 10 people in front of me. But I engaged those 10 people like they were the, the, the most important 10 people on earth. And quite candidly, they were. And what I didn't know is that 30 years later, that that same energy has allowed me to get in front of groups of thousands of people and speak. But my plan didn't change. My objectives didn't change. My goals didn't change. I continued to develop myself, continued to write books, continued to read books. So in this day of sequestration, you've got to be willing to invest in self-development that are targeting you and leading you toward your goals, your dreams, what you want, why you want it, and how you're going to get there. The second phase is to prepare. I talk to people all the time that are constantly getting ready, which is just another form of procrastination, which is usually rooted in self-doubt, fear, anxiety. But I say, don't get ready, be ready. There's a thing you can do today, even without the perfected vehicles, where you can get started on your hopes and dreams and goals for your future. You know, the Bible says, put on the whole armor. It says, get dressed, be equipped, get dressed for where you want to be. Think about the things you want to do. Engage with people who are doing it, because if it can be done and someone else is doing it and it is being done, then why not you? But you've got to focus energy and instead of getting ready, you've got to be ready. But as you put on that whole armor and you're ready to stand, make your principled stand. Stick to your goals, stick to your dreams, because if you don't quit, you won't fail. And then finally, execute. Success has a price. Achievement has a price. Are you willing to pay that price? People want excellence and success to be cheap. It's not. That's why the get rich quick schemes seem to be so prevalent and seem to be so sought after because people want it without work. People want it without labor, but there is a price to pay. And if you can pay that price, just like any investment, you put the seeds of capital in first, the capital is your mind, the capital is your vision, the capital is your resources, but ultimately action is the delineator of faith. When you begin acting as if you're going to receive the thing you're seeking, then it's going to start making its appearance. Not immediately, not overnight, but in a progressive, iterative way that allows you to see the marks of progress. Look, as I think back on my own life, as if, even as I alluded to what happened to me some 20, 30 years ago with one of my first uh, speaking engagements that I tried to book for myself, that I realize now, looking back, that that was one of the greatest learning experiences I could have ever had. But it also demonstrated to me that if you don't give up, you won't fail. That you've got to keep moving and keep inertia working on your side. We try a few things and then it fails and then we stop. But I'm telling you now that the way to build momentum is to get started and to get going. Sir Isaac Newton's law says that an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. But there's something about motion and inertia and momentum that generates a, an effect that ends up getting you greater and higher than you ever dreamed possible. So planning, preparing, execution. These are the three core tenets of my life that have allowed me to have a level of success. And look, I started out first in struggle like many of you might be right now. I worked my way to success. And then I realized that success was not enough, that I wanted to evolve into significance, that I wanted to write books and leave a legacy, which is my ultimate goal. But I want to encourage each one of you today to dust off any dreams that you've allowed to gather dust to get introspective in these times of quiet, in these times of solitude, in these times of isolation. If it brings you back to yourself, isolation has done a wonderful, marvelous thing. Think about all the gifts that you've been endowed with and think of how you can use them in service to mankind. I look forward to seeing all of you at the 8% Nation and until then be safe, be blessed and be successful. Thank you.
a dude is that is that dude eloquent with his words and one of the best public speakers vocally that you've ever heard or is he one of the best he's unbelievable brandon clay awesome job thank you buddy super excited to see you do your thing and do your dance and work and work some magic on stage at eight percent in vegas we're doubling down, virtual and Vegas, the two V's this year. Thank you, Brandon Clay, unbelievable job. Hey, if you love this video, stop what you're doing, click right there, I've got another phone sales videos with tips specifically for you to convert people over the phone. Click on that video and I'll see you there. Today I wanna to talk about five easy phone sales tips that you can implement right away and see success with, okay? So stay with me as I go through each one of these, all right?